Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. So nice to see you shine. It's welcome home, right? Right. Welcome home. Do you want to play something, or do you want me to start in? Okay. We have two songs. Gil, we're going to do a couple songs first. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in the Heart of Las Cruces. Um, I'm Sarah Benson, and we're going to start with a couple of songs. If you uh, would like to stand, I invite you to. Um, yeah, let's do it. Hello, it's great to see you. Hey, friend, you're not alone. Come in, our hearts are open. Welcome home. Come on, the Spirit's moving. Our love is here to grow. Wake up. Our coffee's brewing, welcome home. This is my place, this is your place, this is our place, welcome home. Hello, it's great to see you. Hey friend, you're not alone. Come in, our hearts are open. Welcome home. Come on, the Spirit's moving. Our love is here to grow. Wake up, our coffee's brewing. Welcome home, welcome home, welcome home. <laughs> Our thoughts are prayers, and we are always praying. Our thoughts are prayers. Listen to what you're saying. Seek a higher righteousness, a state of peacefulness, and know that God is always there. And every thought becomes our prayer. Our thoughts are prayers, the tools that we create with. Our thoughts are prayers that spirit resonates with. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of mindfulness, and know that God is always there. And every thought becomes our prayer. And every thought becomes our prayer. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living here in the heart of Las Cruces. My name is Lillian Pilot. I'm guessing most of you know that. Um, our vision here is a world in loving partnership for the good of all. And welcome to anybody visiting for the first time. Do we have any newcomers here today? Hello and welcome. There's, uh, there should be at the back there in a little basket, a little gift bag for you. We actually made it just for you because we knew you were coming. 
Um, there's a, a gift certificate in there, by the way, to the bookstore, so you might want to have a little poke around before you leave. Um, there's also a, a form in there. With if, if you're interested, you could fill that out, give us your email, and we'd be, be able to send you information and sort of keep you in the loop with what's going on. And you're not being singled out here at all, just so you know that. Um, our annual meeting is today, and uh, we have several board members who have completed their term and will be making room for others of you to provide sacred service as board members. So please join us for the meeting and help vote in our new members to the board. And if you're interested in serving on the board, please let Bob know that you can be nominated from the floor. Everybody is welcome at the meeting and only members can vote. Uh, please stay and participate in this important uh, event here if it's at all possible. And there's food to share between this service and the meeting beginning after we eat. Um, we're going to have a five-week summer class facilitated by Reverend Bonnie starting June the 6th through July 11th, Tuesdays from 1.30 to 4.30 p.m. Uh, the sign-up and flyers are in the social hall somewhere. And if you can't find them for some reason, look for one of these and we'll help figure it out. Uh, it's a bargain class, $45 up front and then a weekly love offering. A good class to invite a friend who's interested in learning about what we teach. And also this weekend, our bookstore is having a 25% off sale for everything in the first display case that faces the sanctuary. So better have a look at that. And if any of you would be so kind as to not let me look at that display case, that would be awesome. Um, and the sale it excludes any NA items. And uh, Bob, do you have a report from the board? Anything to report? It says, Bob, report from board if he has anything to report. Stick around, you'll learn everything. <laughs> <laughs> so we believe in the power of prayer, which we call spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. Um, we ask you to fill out any prayer requests. They're found in the pocket behind each um, uh, chair, and they can be put in the God box, which is on that little back table there. And, uh, and again, if you are not sure where to put it, talk to somebody wearing one of these. They're very handy. They let you know who's who. Um, I guess it's called a God can here. And you can also use our prayer request button on the website. We have a prayer team that is made up of practitioners and ministers from the uh, local, the four local New Thought communities. And we will all pray with you in regard to your request. Additionally, if you have something you'd like a quick prayer treatment for after the service, the practitioners uh, will be around the room to provide this service for you as well. And we really encourage you to fill out a gratitude card. If you're, um, you know, you've been making prayer requests and you've had some shift and movement in the matter at hand, it's really wonderful to let the practitioners know and it, it just continues to uplift and move the entire energy forward. And now it's time for song, silence, and prayer. Okay. A thousand times before 
and yet again. Come again, come and yet again, come. Come, come, whoever you are, wonder, worshiper, lover of living. Come, come, whoever you are, this isn't a caravan of despair. It doesn't matter if you've broken your vows a thousand times before and yet again. Come again, come and yet again, come. Come again, come. Come again, come. Come again, come. Come again, It doesn't matter if you've broken your vows a thousand times before. Come again, come. Does that not fill your heart knowing that there is one life, one mind, one force field of realignment called love, and that love is the fabric of everything, every living being? That love is the very nature of who we are. So come again, come. And again, come again, come. I think we have some special music to play. <laughs> do you have a reading first? Would you like me to do that now? Uh-huh. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I wanted to read after some pretty music. But That's fine no, too. That's they fine. Want us, we? <laughs> we could switch it up today. <laughs> I'm just reading the letter here and ah yes, reading. It's right there. I really want to blame it on the classes. <laughs> this is from uh, Unveiling Your Hidden Power by Emma Curtis Hopkins, Metaphysics for the 21st Century. And of course, Emma Curtis's work was part of the foundational work of the science of mind uh, movement work. She writes, Plato taught that the whole world is a colossal system of shadows. The Buddhists and Hindus teach similarly, speaking of all as maya, which has been translated as illusion but means something more like projections on a movie screen. The deepest shadow is belief in wrongdoing. It doesn't matter if you've broken your vows a thousand times before. Come again, come. Mm -hmm. Its shadows appear as long stretches of hardship over your pathway, which in truth is all light with the glory of goodness. It's said, and this is hard to hear, that elephants sometimes fight shadows on the rocks until they've beaten themselves into pieces. Similarly, missionaries and activists fighting the great shadow of belief in somebody doing some great doings, great wrongs in the world, burn out with the feeling of how gigantic the monsters are who have this poor world in their jaws. Mm -hmm. In this world, however, each of us has all we can do to look to the ways of our own heart, ensuring that our thoughts and world are in harmony by thinking as our heart is thinking, instead of from any imagination of sin or mistake. And now you may play some pretty music. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
You will do amazing things with the joys each new day brings. And with every step you take, bless the progress that you make. The reason you live is found in every gift you give. Love your life, love your dreams. You will do amazing things. Amazing, amazing. You will do amazing things. Amazing. Amazing things. Oh, the places you will go and the people you will know. Don't worry when, where, or how. You don't have to know that now. You're on the right track. No need to look ahead or back. Just enjoy what this day brings. You will do amazing things. Amazing, amazing. You will do amazing things. Amazing. Amazing, you will do amazing things. You don't have to work it out, just stay in the here and now. Let your mind pass for a little while. Sometimes deepest answers come when you're not there having fun. So close your eyes and take a breath and smile. Amazing, amazing, you will do amazing things. Amazing, amazing, you will do amazing things, you will do amazing things. so very pretty. <clears throat> uh, I'd like to introduce our speaker for today, which is uh, Reverend Bram Watkins. Now, Reverend Bram, 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 <laughs> Reverend Bram, <laughs> as soon as I get my mouth working, I'll, I'll just call you again. Uh, Reverend Bram is a native New Mexican and was raised in La Union, New Mexico, and El Paso, Texas. You're right on the cusp there, aren't you? Um, he has an MBA from the American Graduate School of International Management, Thunderbird, in Phoenix, Arizona, a BA in Spanish from the University of New Mexico. I did not know that about you. A master practitioner degree in neuro-linguistic programming from NLP Learning Systems in Dallas, Texas, and is an ordained interfaith minister by One Spirit Interfaith Seminary of New York, New York. Reverend Watkins is a student of the Science of Mind, Unity Teachings, and Pranic Healing. He served as a guest speaker over the past 19 years at local churches in El Paso and Las Cruces. And for his complete bio, you can refer to our newsletter because it's really, really long. No, I know. <laughs> because he's an incredibly accomplished person. Uh, presently, we're very grateful to welcome back to our platform. Thank you, Reverend Bram. Um, 
I do want to say I, how deeply I appreciate that he color-coded his tie. I hadn't worn this one in quite a while. It spoke to me. Obviously, uh, Lillian was uh, hoping I'd have a little color today. So. so for my old friends back there and the new folks today, you're going to love the next two hours. Uh, just kidding. Just kidding. But if you like what you hear today, please come back because we have amazing speakers every week. And if you don't like what you hear today, please come back because I'm not always here. Okay? <laughs> It's just so grateful to, to be here today, and uh, I love being back home here. My, uh, my kids always ask, well, Dad, where are you preaching today, or, or my mom? And I said, well, Dorothy's church. This was Dorothy Rothermel's church, and this is who introduced me to everybody up here. So grateful to be here. All I ever talk about is what I'm going through, the stuff I mess up, how I make it worse, and how I finally figure it out. But as I was reading through the, the Science of Mind magazine this month, looking for my inspiration in things, going through all of the articles, it didn't take long because I came across Reverend Dr. Jim Lockard's article titled, The Shadow Healing Through Revealing. And it reminds me of one of my favorite prayers. It says, Lord, reveal what needs to be revealed, heal what needs to be healed, lead me where you need me, and guide me in ways that I can totally understand. And so I, I thought that was good. You see, what we repress into shadow, we project onto others. My mom used to tell me the sin that we see in others, the judgment that we see in others, the wrong that we see in others is our own self-issue projected out onto them. We repress things that we don't like, and then at the perfect time that we see it in somebody else, bleh, you know, we just put it right back out on them. In the Science of Mind uh, magazine this month, Ernest Holmes writes, you and I could not criticize unless the criticism was in us. We've already repressed it, and now it's coming back out as a projection. You will see nothing in anybody else unless you have it in you to see. Mm -mm -mm. You are what you say, and what you say is what you become, and you cannot see a thing in me that you don't see in yourself first. Remember that, because I'm going to be tying that back in a few times today. We all have these shadow aspects, and we often project them onto other folks. And when we find folks that trigger us, we often find ourselves judging them and, and projecting. And if we don't figure out or pay attention to that, we'll continue to do it. Lockard says, it's an unconscious process, and the only way to become aware of it is to know us a strong emotion. And I notice it because I feel it right here in my solar plexus. It just, it, it kind of does that. And if I would just remember to, <laughs> to see that or feel that, then it'll, it'll help me stop from being so judgmental of other folks. It's this denial of our unconscious projection, that, that shadow. So praying, you know, meditating and affirming, although essential, spiritual practices, it doesn't penetrate the shadow at this unconscious level. You know, whatever we have repressed continue, continues to be active in us, and it's kind of like our own filter that, that we have to see through when we're not realizing these imperfections in ourselves. We often use the tools of manifestation, and we can use them for a while, but then we, we hit an obstacle, and the obstacle is this shadow that I'm going to be talking about today. And having this shadow aspect reveal is a whole lot of fun. <laughs> it's, it's, not a, it's not a fun endeavor to go through. And perhaps, so why, perhaps why so many of us are either choose to or taught to only focus on the light side, the manifesting, the prosperity, the abundance. I'm good at that. You know, I figured that out. It's the other stuff. And if we don't do it, you can have some short-term gains, but that long-term transformation just doesn't come about until we deal with, with some of these shadow things. Peggy Shin last week one of my favorite teachers, spoke about the light primarily and what she talked about. Today I'm here to talk about what I was going to say a few minutes ago as the poopy side, the shadow side, the stuff that we don't like to confront. But after the pray-in that we had with Lillian, and by the way, thank you for doing everything today. I mean, from the meditation to the pray-in to everything up here and the wonderful music we had and Bob, everything that you're doing. But you're doing everything today. God bless you. Thank you, thank you. I'm not going to call it the poopy stuff. It's love. 
by going through this, I promise you that if you do dare to look into those shadows, what you will find and come out with is love, true love. So I like to say at the beginning of weddings, true love. I'm so glad that you all get that. <laughs> the repressed aspects deep in our unconscious remain unaffected by these surface activities of the you know, prosperity and abundance, the light stuff. Lockhart says it's like paving a road, but not paying attention to the foundation or the potholes. The potholes are still going to affect the, the performance of the pavement if we haven't dealt with these things. Some new thought teachers think if it's not coming easily, it's not your path. But Lockhart says he's come to realize that struggle is usually present when one seeks true change. You know, there's something that you're pushing up against. In the Philosophical Tree by Carl Jung, he writes, one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. Shadow work is a process of becoming aware of our emotional responses, but then accepting them as the aspect of ourselves being revealed no matter how difficult, and owning that aspect of ourselves and being willing to reintegrate it into our conscious awareness. Long sentence, had to read it, it's important. Jung wrote, the agenda of our soul is to realize and express our true nature fully. And our soul wants to be the most authentic version of ourselves in an expression of the divine, and the soul does not want to accept anything less. But accumulated shadow, as we filter all this poopy stuff, obstructs the actualization and the potential of our soul. And when you're going to face this, I highly suggest doing it with somebody that's done their own shadow work. Do it with a teacher, a guide, a mentor, a counselor, a therapist, somebody that can, somebody that's been there, somebody that can guide you through it. Shadow work moves us towards a realization of our wholeness, and Marion Woodman wrote, if we have identified too closely with the light and have idealized an image of ourselves, then surely our shadow will come up and kick us on the backside. The same is true, though, if we've identified too much with our negative side. Either position is a denial of our wholeness. It's our fear-based false beliefs that have to go. I've talked about it. Wayne Dyer talked about memes. You know, I'm not good enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. That's the stuff that's got to go. Those are the filters that we keep repressing down and putting down. That's the stuff that has to be looked at clearly and guided through so that our light can continue to shine. You know, I thought I was going to talk more about light today, and I was thinking, you know, we need this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. But... I'm doing more of the dark stuff today. So anyway, when we do that, that's when we get that true transformation. In the Science of Mind magazine this month, Kelly Robbins, in the article, she states that we grow more spiritually when we do it wrong than when we do it right. Now, I firmly believe that. I hate to use the word wrong, but that's, that's a good four-letter word for me sometimes. Change acts as a stimulus for the spiritual growth. She asked, asks us to explore the uncomfortable side of spirituality so that we can heal. Healing our wounds, learning to love all aspects of ourselves, especially the wounded parts, allows us to shine our light brighter and ultimately know our oneness with all. Our darkness is not evil. It's merely a part of us that's not yet illuminated. I found a quote from The Wrinkle in Time that says, the wound is where the light comes in for your healing thought that was very nice. So I think we can all agree that it's in the, in the challenging times that we grow more. As Kelly said, maybe when we do it wrong. I, um, I get a number of different readings each day, and, and um, if I see something that moves me, something that inspires me, I'll either save it on my phone, I'll save it on my desktop, and I save it as quotes and comments, and I save it for the year, and I'll have 20, 30 pages by the end of the year. And I just save that stuff because I'll go back to it and look for inspiration. But as I was doing the research for today, I, I came across a, across a quote that my son gave me. By the way, Baylor will be 24 <laughs> this, this summer. Um, when he was in high school, and it says, you will never learn anything about yourself while you're comfortable. I thought, wow, he's a pretty enlightened kid. He gets all that from his mom, gets all his goodness from his mom. So have you been buried, buried by your challenge or have you been planted 
The only difference is our expectation. Are you buried or are you planted? What are you expecting to come from it? I say let your mess become your message and let your test become your testimony. Even one of my favorite Psalms, 23rd Psalm. Yea, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. The Bible doesn't talk about death, but merely the shadow of death. And that's the seeming loss of God's presence. You know, there's only goodness. You know, there's not good and evil. There's just goodness and lack of the awareness of God's presence in our lives. The shadow is something that needs to be dealt with. It needs to be faced. It needs to be worked through. Not something that's permanent and certainly not something to be feared. You know, last October, I delivered a message here on manifesting prosperity and abundance. And I am good about talking about how to two plus two equals four. How do, how do you get to the stuff that you want to create? And it just seems, though, that the universe keeps serving up for me on a platinum platter other things that I should be working on instead. Not the light stuff, the shadow stuff. Life balance, establishing better spiritual self-care in my life, peace of mind. Those are the things that I keep seeing. It's like, oh my goodness. And I'm, I'm, um, I hate to use the word ashamed, but I'm absolutely shocked at, to stand in front of you and tell you the amount of fear and the things that I've been afraid to face. It's, it's real. And I'm shocked that even with the things that I hallucinate that I know, <laughs> that I still have these lessons that come about. They still bubble up. So apparently there's some potholes to, to fill. So last week, Shaggy talked about uh, Neville Goddard a, a number of times. And to paraphrase Goddard, he says, control your feelings to control the outcome you desire in your life. Well, I haven't been controlling my, my thoughts, my feelings, my actions, anything to the degree that I would like um, over the last eight months. I mean, I've, I've spiraled down the rabbit hole a few times to the point where my, my thought process, my fear, my lack of realization, my lack of willingness to look at stuff has caused physical pain in my body. Both of my knees swelled up to the size of volleyballs. I had to have surgery on one and after skiing for the last 55 years, since I was three years old, I had one of the worst accidents I, and fell and blew out my shoulder, separated my shoulder. And I'm just like, geez, Louise, when am I going to start paying attention to stuff? Um, so it got my attention, and, and, and <laughs> to say the least. Um, but it, it, it's also because I started researching for this message uh, a while back, and um, as I was doing that, I came across some stuff, and I mean, it was divinely inspired because it just came in. I'm like, oh, okay. When's the last time I did any shadow work? Well, it was about four years ago. And it was with an amazing guide, angel, teacher, counselor, therapist, mentor of mine. And it's reminded me how much I needed to get back to the work of facing my fears so that I could free my mind from inflicting this physical damage literally on my body. So please allow me to share some of my session notes, is what I'm calling them, for doing some of my shadow work. Because I, you know, I know you all think I'm perfect, but, and Edie, please don't laugh out loud. Um, I'm just kidding. But let me tell you about some of the things that I've been going through when I was doing this shadow work. And apparently I'm still going through them. See if any of these sound familiar. Judgment, anger, Fear, unforgiveness, enabling, insistence on being correct. Anyone else have that? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> so some of the things that I'm going to spout off here pretty quick, some are quotes, some are stories, but they were all lessons as I went through this stuff because I, I, I wrote stuff down, and thank God I did because it has been a, a lifeline. We all have the same purpose, but we have a different mission. Our purpose is to strive towards our own perfection, and perfection is the absence of negative emotion. One of the main things she taught me. Position of power or centeredness is being in the present moment, which is a state of immense power, and the present moment is a state of love. 
My purpose is to choose to stay in that present moment of love. Negative emotions having the root cause and fear, positive emotions having the root cause of love. I've talked about sin a number of times, one of the words I never understood growing up but absolutely hated. We all understand that it's an old archery term, which means to miss the mark. But what I hadn't thought about is the mark in the bullseye is love. So whenever we choose anything other than love as a response, we're missing the mark. Hate to tell you all you're all sitting out there like I've been, but anytime I choose anything other than love, I'm missing the mark. This was heavy. You fall into the energy of the person you judge. You rise to the level of the energy, person, or situation that you forgive. And Ho'oponopono, my studies through that ancient Hawaiian forgiveness technique, reminds me that forgiveness is the only way to wipe the slate clean. Even Jesus said, on the cross, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And my teacher was reminding me, Bram, be more Christ-like. Don't follow him. Be more Christ-like. In John 14, 6, one of the things that I use that I think most Christians get wrong, you know, and no one cometh under the Father except that, and they normally say through me, but it's by me. The Aramaic was translated incorrectly. No one cometh under the Father, the truth, except by me. And what he meant by his vibration, his feelings, his thoughts, his words, his actions. He didn't come to create a religion. He came to create a relationship. She told me to be more Christ-like. And I thought, ooh. Big, big difference. He's not asking us to follow him. He's asking us to be like him. Reaction is negative, responsive, positive. He who angers loses. I loved Peggy's rendition last week of the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom, the centeredness to know that I am the difference. There's not anything out here acting upon me. It's this way. Instead of judging somebody harshly, she taught me to say, ay, pobrecito. They're doing the best they can with what they know. Pobrecito means poor little boy, poor little child. Instead of being angry and judging, saying, just admitting that, hey, they're doing the best they can with what they've got. No judgment, why? Because we fall to the level of the person we judge, we rise to the level of what we forgive. It's, what else could be true? It's asking myself, what else could be true so I can suspend judgment? I get to to choose whether I'm going to be a blessing or a curse by whether I respond with love or something else. You all know whether I've been meditating or not. You cut me off in traffic. If I don't wave back with all five fingers, I have not been meditating. (laughs) I need that half hour every day to prepare for the other 23 and a half. She said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But do we remember what the truth is? The truth is your true identity that we're made in the image and likeness of our creator. That's the truth. That's the one truth we need to remember. That creates the oneness. God is love. So again, anytime we choose anything other than love, we're missing the mark. She said, self-love is love thy neighbor as thyself. This is a person, my teacher, my guide, my mentor, not a religious person. More scientific, certainly spiritual, but these are all the things that she taught me and listen to the truths. Listen about the love. I thought it was very interesting. Anytime science and, and spirituality come together is a good thing for me. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all else shall be added unto you. And where is the kingdom of heaven? Amen. Right here. You know, for a lot of folks, the the shadows come from childhood trauma. And she asked me to, God bless you, to promise myself three things that I would do for my three-year-old self to heal this childhood trauma. When I was a little boy growing up, all of my family, extended family, everybody called me Brambo, which is a good term of endearment. Not Rambo, Brambo. So I had to think, what are the three things that I'm going to commit to Brambo? 
Number one, I will love you unconditionally. Number two, I will always completely protect you. Number three, I will remind you of our true identity that we're made in the image and likeness of God. So since Brambo will no longer be a victim, I will no longer need the victimizer around for me to protect him. This will drop, this will help integrate my angry lower vibration into my higher being, moving out of aggression, anger, and judgment into assertiveness, power, and discernment. Not judgment, discernment. Because at 58 years old, who's driving the bus in my life? My higher self or Brambo? (laughs) Stuff happened to me when I was a kid. Stuff happened to all of us. I'm going to take the wheel now. She talked about the pinch theory, pinch, and how it affects your shadow. How many times will you allow yourself to be pinched and to be hurt before you stop people from hurting you? Your anger and your violence level goes up directly proportional to how often you continue to let people hurt you or pinch you. People say, often say that mass murderers were the nicest people they knew. And it's because they allowed themselves to be hurt and pinched so many times that they finally snapped. Whatever uncenters us is what is pinching us. A pinch is our own imperfection, our shadow, and something that we need to work on. And since our pinch is our weak link, and when it's revealed, then we'll know what to work on. So obviously, she didn't think I was going to get all this at once. So she gave me a few processes. This first one is a five-step process on how to get recentered. Number one, realize as quickly as possible that I just became uncentered. Again, I feel it here. Number two, ask myself, who did I just judge? Who did I judge? Number three, immediately forgive the person I just judged. Ay, pobrecito. He just, he's doing the best they can with what they know. Number four, immediately forgive myself. And number five, get centered again. Take a deep breath and say, present moment, state of love and light. Present moment, state of love and light. No self-judgment. Just love my three-year-old self and forgive him. Never feel guilty about past actions. I must love Brambo more than anyone else so that I can give you the benefit of my own self-love. I got to give up negative self-talk, self-victimization. Love your neighbor as yourself and your Lord God above all else. But you can't give what you don't have. You got to deal with that shadow work so we can get some of these filters out of the way and so that we have a better aspect of ourselves, pure love and light, to give to one another. Because the opposite of fear is love. The opposite of judgment is uh, is love. The opposite of guilt is love. The opposite of shame is love. She said, instead of getting angry, Bram, and cursing like you often do, why don't you just look at it and say, cool. Or as my NLP master teacher taught me, she she just said, no matter what would happen, interesting. (laughs) Isn't that interesting? (laughs) Live centered from the inside out, not the outside in. She said, tell me what you avoid. Tell me what you fear, and I'll tell you what you're creating more of. Whatever uncenters me is revealing my shadow and what I need to be working on. She gave me four steps to heal. One, learn self-love. Heal yourself first because you can't give what you don't have. Number two, take total responsibility for your words, thoughts, actions, and deeds and demand the same from others. This eliminates blame and codependency, something that I learned quite well. She gave me a definition, though, of codependency. It's an addiction to fill our emptiness with relationships. (sighs) Still get a visceral reaction with that one. Number three, use the law of attraction, the law of mind, to create what you want in your life. Number four, timing. Stay in a heightened, centered state of love and light. Again, over and over, present moment, state of love and light. Present moment, state of love and light. She says living in the present moment helps us to eliminate the four human diseases. Guilt and shame are diseases of the past, and anxiety and worry are diseases of the future. Perfection is the absence of these and other negative emotions. She reminded me to let do my best and let God do the rest. She reminded me about my CSO, my chief spiritual officer, and let the CSO handle things. 
She says, judging people turns your light off. Try discernment, not judgment. Be filled with light, Bram, she would say, so that you can be of service. I ask every day, how may I serve? How may I serve? Make me an instrument of your peace, not a redheaded Leo with former anger issues. <laughs> Whoo, baby. Everyone is doing the best they can with what they have. She says, if I'm correct, but I'm still angry, I still lose. She told me about a session that she had with a number of soldiers that had just returned home from Desert Storm in Iraq. They, she called it the Walmart story. And folks, if y'all can go into Walmart without being triggered, you're not paying attention. <laughs> they were all taken by a bus to the local Walmart. They were instructed to go inside for 10 minutes, but they were told they couldn't buy anything and they couldn't talk to anyone. They were told that when they got back on the bus, they couldn't say a word until they got back to the therapy group room. When they got back there, she asked them what they saw, what they felt. And they all responded with fat people, ugly people, judgmental people, horrible people, every single one of them. After six months of centeredness therapy, stuff she was working on with me, they went back to the same Walmart, given the same instructions, and this time when they all came out and they went back to the therapy room, what did you see? What did you experience? They saw every single one of them as beautiful, loving, and kind, peaceful. You always see a reflection of yourself, back to that Ernest Holmes quote. What you think about me is none of my business, tells me nothing about me, but it does tell me something about you. Love thy neighbor as thyself and the Lord God above all else. However, we must have that self-love. Think about how many times she said that to me over and over and over again. I'm going to give you the, not the misconceptions, but what she calls the myth conceptions of self-love. Number one, if I love myself, I'll become conceited and arrogant. Not true. Number two, if I have high self-esteem and high goals and don't reach them, I won't be able to handle the disappointment. Not true. Number three, if I have self-love, I will become selfish. Not true. <laughs> you become selfless, not selfish. She said diversity is to accept people exactly as they are, and the diversity must start with accepting ourselves. You can't accept others as they are until you accept your own shadow and imperfections. She said, rejoice when you see your imperfections and be grateful to those have br who have brought it to your attention. Teal Swan said, the people who trigger us to feel negative emotion are our messengers, and they are messengers for the unhealed parts of our being. God loves us all. Muslims, Jews, Christians, agnostics, atheists, Aggies, minors, all of us. God loves all of us. Can we rise to this level of love? Of love? Or do we only love the people that we agree with, that think like we do, talk like we do, go to church where we do, vote like we do? <sighs> love yourself with all of your shadows and imperfections, and then love your neighbor. Get centered, love yourself, and then you'll see others beautifully. Love yourself first, shadows and all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Namaste. And Bram, that was fantastic. And as a gift, I'd like to give you this box. <laughs> As a gift, I'd like to give you my heartfelt love for a beautiful talk. Um, so knowing, if you'll join me in prayer, we are in a marriage of spirit and form. There is one God. There is one force. There is one life. There is one mind. There's only one life, that life is God's life, that life is perfect, that life is my life now.
we are the marriage of spirit and form. As Bram so eloquently put it, marriage is what brings us together. And so I know that everything he spoke of, the love, the light, all of that is the true nature of being and that my work is to move aside the cloak of shadows that it may beam forth. And if it's my work, it's your work. And if it's your work, it's my work. So I declare the willingness and the self-love and the joy and gratitude to look upon those shadows and see them for the untruth that they are, error coming to us to give itself up so that it may be returned to the light. And that is the true nature, living as the light. I'm extremely grateful for that talk today and for all those who have contributed the ideas and the words and the feelings and the openness and the love in order to be able to expand these ideas into a wonderful luminous cloud that we can just bathe in and bask in and take with us wherever we go. So I release these words into the law. And I know that this and all that has been spoken of and all that is dreamed of and all that is cherished and all that is beautiful and all that is loving is already done in the mind of the one and therefore it is done in the here and now. And so it is. I believe it's time for some special music. Definitely says prayer after talk, then it says special music. <laughs> I promised I'd be a good girl and follow the rules and do what I was supposed to do. Still getting used to this setup. All right, this song is called If Not Now, Tell Me When. It's by Carrie Newcomer. And uh, it's got a chorus that is repeated a lot. It's pretty simple, so uh, if you can get the hang of it, then please sing along. If not now, tell me when. If not now, tell me when. We may never see this moment or place and time again. If not now, if not now, tell me when. I see sorrow and trouble in this land. I see sorrow and trouble in this land. Although there will be struggle, we'll make the change we can. If not now, if not now, tell me when. Oh, if not now, tell me when. If not now, tell me when. We may never see this moment or place in time again. If not now, if not now, tell me when. Oh, I may never see the promised land. I may never see the promised land. Oh, and yet we'll take this journey, we'll walk it hand in hand. If not now, if not now, tell me when. Oh, if not now, tell me when. If not now, tell me when. We may never see this moment 
present or placed in time again if not now if not now tell me when we'll work until it's done every daughter every son every soul that ever longed for something better something brighter it will take a change of heart for this to mend it will take a change of heart for this to mend but miracles do happen every shining now and then if not now if not now tell me when if not now tell me when if not now tell me when we may never see this moment or place in time again if not now if not now tell me when yes miracles do happen every shining now and then if not now if not now tell me when if not now if not now tell me when <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Beautiful. Now is the time. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of the party. Did you, any of you have to learn that? Now is the time. Yeah. Every time I hear now is the time, which is a great clue for the things that get stuck in our heads. Now is the time when we consider giving back to the center and recognizing that in the material world, in the physical world, it takes material money to manage the physical elements of being a place that you can come for your spiritual nourishment. Um, offering plates are at the door, uh, doors, so they're easy to get to. And uh, the tithe recipient for May is La Casa, Inc. Uh, their mission to support everyone affected by domestic violence um, and their vision is a just and safe community free from violence and abuse. La Casa Inc. is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization in domestic violence prevention, awareness, advocacy, and support. And there is more information in the newsletter about them as well. So please join me as we affirm our blessings on the screen as we affirm the details of Bob's desktop. <laughs> Altogether, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, in me. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. I am so blessed, I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. It says here, benediction. And I think that the atmosphere and the energy in this room has already spoken to that in spades. But I affirm again, there is only one. There's only one life, 
That life is God's life. That life is perfect. And that life is my life now. And so it is. And let's stand and sing. Let this be my soul. 